Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's Journey Through Torah. This week we are in Beshalach, and he sent. This week we have the, the picture, literally the Exodus, right? And then in, in the book of Exodus, or Shemot, we see now the people are coming out. Pharaoh has had enough, and he sends the people out. And uh, we know, uh, obviously, Yahweh did not need Pharaoh's permission to bring them out. But yet here we see Yahweh was working things and orchestrating it all so that those who had oppressed his people said, okay, no, this is Yahweh's people. He fights for them. He protects them. We are powerless against him. You go serve your God. We will just leave you alone. Okay. They're just telling, uh, it's their admission that Yahweh is the one true God. And so here we have some pictures of that and Yahweh led them out to go out into the wilderness. We know that the point of them coming out of Mitzrayim was not just to go to the land. It was not just to go into the wilderness. The point of them coming out first and foremost was to go to that mountain to hear the voice of Yahweh, to hear from his Ruach, to hear from his spirit, to receive his words that uh, would be given for Israel for all time to come. And to show his heart to his people, to show that uh, he, he upholds covenant that he has established with Israel, and that he will protect his people. He will watch over Israel, he will guard them, and he will place them in the palm of his hand. So he led them out, and, and he did this in certain ways. All right, It wasn't just a matter of Yahweh saying, okay, people, you're free to go. Um, it's that way. See you when you get there. You know, no, he, he led them out along the way. And so everything that they experienced in the wilderness had a direct influence or was a direct or direct cause of, uh, being in the presence of Yahweh and walking with him and him leading them and working these things in themselves along the way that Yahweh is desiring for them. So there's a lot to be established in here and, and we're not going to be able to catch to all of it today, but. We are going to talk about the leading of Yahweh. You know, a lot of times when you hear people talking, uh, they'll say, well, I, I, I was led to do this, or I feel that God is leading me to say or do something, or I feel that uh, the, the Ruach is leading me to do something. And uh, nowadays, it's, it's, you got to be careful. You have to really discern things because uh, maybe it's just something that you just really want. And you're saying, okay, well, that makes sense. That must be God. Okay, um, or maybe he is uh, leading leading something by his ruach. So we really need some discernment to do that. Thing with Israel though is he literally was leading them. This was not something that could be uh, metaphorical. It was an absolute literal. They watched and they saw the pillar of fire, the 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 column of smoke, the the, the, the fire at night, the the cloud during the day. They saw this, and as it moved, they followed. They were literally following the leading of Yahweh. And this is a result of the relationship that he had with them. He says, I will lead you out and bring you to myself, okay, to come to that mountain. And um, this also shows us some things that is, is relevant for us today. Yahweh will lead his people by his grace and his mercy. And that's one of the things that we're going to see today is that when Yahweh was leading them, he was leading them by their grace and mercy that he was uh, giving to them, even though it may not look like it at first, at first take. At first take, uh, when they come out, they immediately face hardship. But why? There's a reason for that. Okay. So let's go to Exodus 13 and let's take a, a quick look at 17 and 18. After Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them, so we're going to look at that word lead for a minute, did not lead them along the road to the land of the Philistines, although that was nearby, for God said, the people might change their minds if they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around the way of the wilderness to the Sea of Reeds, and B'nai Israel went up out of the land of Egypt armed. So the first thing I want to point out is Yahweh didn't take them the quick, easy route, okay, uh, because it was not easy to do so. It would have been faster, but the potential for them seeing war was better if they followed that route to going through the Philistines. And Yahweh says they're not ready for that. Although we go on and we read, it says that they came out fully armed. So they were completely equipped for battle. The problem is they were not spiritually ready for battle. 
although they have physically had the weapons that they needed, they needed to develop this hope and trust in Yahweh that he will fight for them. Because we see throughout the Torah, they did have battles as they were going through the wilderness. And we see immediately here, Yahweh says, well, I don't want them to see war yet because then they may grow faint hearted, right? They, they have to learn to trust me. But yet he drove them to the place where Pharaoh and his men come against them to essentially see battle. Okay. So it's kind of like, so are they going to battle the Philistines or are they going to battle uh, Mitzrayim? So hmm, either way, they're going to see battle. So, but what Yahweh was saying is he's orchestrating this in a way to where they will trust him and, and have faith in him and have that relationship grow. If they go the route of the Philistines, they're going to have to pick up their weapons. They're going to have to do these. And Yahweh says, I'll be with you on the battlefield, but they're going to have to be involved in that. Whereas Yahweh is, had already established, when you come out of Mitzrayim, I will crush those that oppress you and you will never have to worry about them ever again. You will never be looking over your shoulder about the things that bound you and held you back. You will be moving forward. And so when he brought them to this place, which we'll get to in a little bit, where they were backed up against the sea, that they couldn't go further anymore. And Yahweh says, now you're going to see something, right? Now, now it's going to be established that uh, I meant what I said. The things that held you back are not going to hold you back. The things that oppress you will never oppress you again. The things that I have for you are forward, not behind you. And you will never have to be looking over your shoulder to see what that means. Okay. So now when we look at that, so he was leading them. So that's what we're going to look at. The word for lead is nacham. Nacham is from the root word nacha, nacha, which is also used again in Exodus 13, 21, where it says that Adonai went before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead the way. And so again, to lead the way is, is a lankotam, to lead them. It's the, again from the word nacha. So he led them by the pillar uh the, the pillar of the cloud, he led the way in the pillar of fire by night to give them light so they could travel both day and night. So what we're looking at here is he was leading them continually. He didn't get a, he didn't get a break. Okay. He, he was leading them when the, when the pillar moved, they moved and they were following him along the way. They were leading him. They may have been following Moshe, so to speak, but they were all seeing who Moshe was following. And it was this pillar that Yahweh said, he's there and he's leading them along in the way. And how was this done? In chapter 15, 13, we see it's uh, you're, in your loving kindness, you led the people you have redeemed. You guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. So this word lead is also um, meaning uh, like bringing to a goal or bringing them to a place. Because it says in the Hebrew, nachita bachasdecha im amzo. So you, uh, in your loving kindness, in your grace, in your mercy, you led this people. And so that's what we're looking at. So when they get to the other side of the water, you know, in the song, the song at the sea, and after the water came back down over Pero and his, uh, and his army, we, we see this uh, testimony of song that breaks out and all in the midst of all of that going on in chapter 15, we see it is proclaimed in your mercy, in your grace, you led this people. And they realized that after the fact, they couldn't see that it was in his grace and his mercy. He led them there as they're facing the idea of we can't go any further. And now Pharaoh and his army is coming against us to destroy us. And we're just basically sitting ducks. We, there's nothing we can do about it. They couldn't see that in his grace and his mercy, he led them there. But yet once they got through it, they could look back and see that. So again, this is one of these things where we have to learn to trust Yahweh and to go through and to follow him. All right. Another thing is when we're, uh, when Yahweh is leading us, we can find a, a, a way to rest in that. We can find a way to rest in him in that, because a lot of times it's unnerving, isn't it? Uh, when you don't know what life holds or what, what lays ahead or what's going on or, or, or what's happening before you, but yet Yahweh does. So when you're following him, sometimes it's like, okay, what do I do? And, and I don't know how this is going. I've never done this before, but yet we, we must trust we must trust Yahweh. Uh, we even see this in the word itself, all right? The word nacha is etymologically related to the word nuach, which is where we get the word rest, right? Nuach, does that sound familiar? Noah, Noah. But we see this again, uh, a seating as in Exodus 33, 14. It says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest, right? And, and that's exactly what it says, okay? And then we have this word nuach, vehanechuti lach. And this word nuach, so so go, my presence will go with you, 
and I will give you rest. If his presence is with us, he will give us rest. And we see this as well in Proverbs 29, 9, where it says, if a, if a wise man argues with a foolish man, he rants or laughs with no resolution. This word where it says no resolution means no rest. So there is no rest in, the, in this argument that's going on, right? So there's no rest in strife. There's no rest in contention. But yet, when we have Yahweh's presence with us, there is rest. And I said this was also where we get the word Noah from in Bereshit, Genesis 6, 8. Noah found grace in the sight of Adonai. And the word Noah and grace, Noah and Hen, it's the same letters. It's just the same word reversed. So we have a picture of uh, rest and grace working together, showing us the picture that we need to learn to rest in the grace of Yahweh. It is he who equips us to go through life, and it is he who uh, brings us into his presence. It is he who is leading us. And if that is the case, then he can give us rest, right? Because I said in Exodus 33, 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. But we also see Yeshua says in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, come to me all who weary and are burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. So we have promises here of finding rest. Now this, this rest is, uh, I don't think it means absence of turmoil or absence of problems. Uh, I just mean, I just believe that it means trust. You can rest in Yahweh. He will go before you, right? Because where they were led to was not a place of rest. Where they were led to was a place of learning to rest in Yahweh, right? And there was nothing they could do at this point, but to see what Yahweh is instructing them to do because it didn't make sense to them. So what happens? Okay, let's go to, over to Exodus 14. Verses 1 and 2, it says, Adonai spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Bnei Israel, so that they turned back and encamped before Pihaherot, between Migdal and the sea, and you were to camp by the sea opposite Baal Zephon. I want to make this point here. This, the place where they were to, uh, uh, to go to encamp before was Pihaherot, but it can also be read as, same spelling, same way, Pihaherot, which means the mouth or opening of liberty. So they were going to this place of the opening of liberty or to the entrance of liberty to this place. Can you imagine maybe the, the hopeful? This is the place where we're going. Yes, we're going to see this liberty. We're going to see this deliverance. We're going to see all these great things. And when they get there, it's water and we can't swim to the other side. What's going to happen here? And then Pharaoh and his troop is coming, right? What in the world is going on here? So we led, we're led to this place of liberty. They're opening to this mouth of liberty, opening to our freedom, opening. Great, awesome. But yet, this was hardship. This was fear. This was a, a war. What are we going to do now, right? So we see in Exodus 14, 11 to 15. So this says to Moshe, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness because there were no graves in Egypt? Why have you dealt this way with us to bring us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave, let us alone so we may serve the Egyptians? It was better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Where was their focus? What were they looking at? What were they paying attention to, right? Were they paying attention to, okay, well, Yahweh yet led us here. And if he led us here, he's got to have a plan. Um, and then ask, what is the plan and what do we need to do? No, immediately was the, uh, uh, the, the complaining, oh, what, you brought us out here to die? Because it wasn't, you know, you couldn't have just killed us in Egypt. You had to bring us out here to die, right? No, no, no. See, the, the, the focus was on the wrong thing here. So what happens next? Verse 13, Moses says to the people, don't be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh. See the salvation of Adonai, which he will perform for you today. You have seen the Egyptians today, but you will never see them again ever. So when he says, see the salvation of Yahweh, literally he's saying, Uru is to see or to experience something at Yeshua Yahweh, to see or experience the Yeshua of Yahweh. Yeshua is the word for salvation. And I do believe that this is uh, speaking, give, giving us allusions, not illusions, allusions to things that are uh, in throughout the rest of the Torah to experience. Yahweh says when he brought them out of Mitzrayim, he was redeeming them. And so how do we see redemption? 
to we are redeemed because of the Yeshua. We are, so as we are redeemed, he now brings us to the water. What's next? Mikvah. Okay. So now we're, we're getting ready for this mikvah to see and to experience the salvation, the Yeshua of Yahweh. He is redeeming you. He is bringing you to himself. So get ready. You're going to get wet. All right. What you need to do is uh, to rest and to settle within yourself that Yahweh is, is here and he is leading you along the way. All right. Where else do we see things like this where it says uh, to be still in the trust, right? 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Psalm 46.10 and 11 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahweh is with us. The God of Yaakov is our refuge. Selah. And Isaiah 35.4 says, Say to those with fearful hearts, What? Be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And so we have here a picture of the deliverance that was given to them. He see and experience the Yeshua of Yahweh as he was redeeming them, which is exactly what he said was going to happen back at the back when he was talking to Moshe, when Yahweh was talking to Moshe in Exodus chapter six, when he says, I will redeem you, I will bring you out, I will deliver you, I, I will do all of these things for you. He's, this was redeeming. So Yahweh is saying, I am redeeming my people. I am bringing you to myself. And uh, it may not make sense to you now, but when you get on the other side of it, there are some things that you're going to see and experience there. That's why when they, after they got through, they could make some awesome declarations, proclamations, and break forth in this prophetic song that they sang, right? So experiencing the Yeshua of Yahweh. And that's what we're called to do today as well, to experience the Yeshua of Yahweh. Experience Yeshua. He is our Redeemer. He is our Savior. He is the one who, who heals, restores, delivers. By him, the world was made and founded. And, and uh, all of this bringing pictures of Yeshua working in our lives today, even still. Okay, uh, But we know that he and the Father are one, as they have said more, more than once. All right, We see in Acts 4.12, it says, There is salvation and no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. What? Not the name of Yeshua. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, O Yahweh, so that I am healed. Save me, so that I am safe, for you are my praise. And Isaiah 43, 11 and 12 says, I, I am Yahweh, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved and made known, and there was no foreign mighty one among you. You are my witnesses, declares Yahweh, that I am El. The only way that Acts 4, 12 could be true is if Jeremiah 17 and Isaiah 43 is true, and they're backing up the place together. So here they are, they come to this place of, of liberty, but they're not looking at uh, what's going to happen to bring liberty to them. They're looking at the wrong thing. And so Moshe says, to be still and Yahweh will fight for you. You experience the Yeshua of Yahweh. And then there's four, verse 14, he says, Adonai will fight for you and while you hold your peace. So this was, I don't think this was some very... Uh, poetic little something guys just settle down be still just wait and see no uh he was literally telling them to just stop just say nothing just stop right now to just listen up okay which uh where you see other things in here as well it's hard to hard to listen to what yahweh is telling us when we're trying to talk over him you know it's hard to to listen to what yahweh is trying to say to us if we don't stop long enough to listen to what he's saying you know and before, before we speak, we need, to, we need to listen, right? We need to listen to what he has to say to us. And so here he says, again, it says that Yahweh yilechem lechem ve'atem, and then this last word here, tacharishon, uh, is the word harash. Harash, when it says, while you hold your peace, that word harash, which means to, uh, to, to not say a word, literally not be able to say a word right? Mute, not able to say anything, okay? Uh, like being, being deaf or unable to absorb auditory stimuli, like it said in Exodus 4.11, Adonai said to him, who made man's mouth or who makes a man mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, Adonai? This is what Yahweh was saying to Moshe. And again, he was, he's saying this, it's, it's who, who makes a man able to speak or able to not speak, right? And the etymological dictionary, uh, dictionary of biblical Hebrew uh, Hirsch says that Haresh is also related to focusing decisively. 
to make an, an, an intentional effort to focus on something. And if you're focusing on something, you're not going to be doing much talking. Okay. So he's, he's saying, listen up, pay attention, focus on what Yahweh is going to do in your midst. And like I said, when Yahweh is wanting to speak to us, we need to be quiet. All right. It also says in Ecclesiastes 5, 1 and 2, do not be quick with your mouth or hasty in your heart to utter a word in God's presence. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. As a dream comes with excessive burdens, so a fool's voice with too many words. And in James 1, 19 and 20, he says, Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. See, we need to listen to the voice of Yahweh to hear what he is saying to us. Uh, we do not tell Yahweh what, what, what we're going to do or what he's going to do for us, okay? We listen to his voice for what, how he is instructing us. Habakkuk 2.20 says, Adonai is in his holy temple. Let, let all the land be silent before him. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 7 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be silent and a time to speak. So again, to discern and knowing these times that are put before us is a part of our life, right? Another interesting thing, the word Choresh also means to engrave, to engrave something. So if we are silent and we listen to Yahweh, he will engrave within us his words that give us life, uh, a place of hope and, 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 and following him. Exodus 28, 9 and 11 is also used in this word, where it says you are to take two onyx stones and engrave, them, engrave on them the names of Bnei Israel, six of their names on one stone, six of, uh, of the remaining six on the other stone in the order of their birth. With the work of a gem cutter, this word for gem cutter, harash evan, is just that, this word harash, to engrave, like, like he is engraving a seal, and uh, etch the two stones in the order of the names of Bnei Israel, make them enclosed in settings of gold. Of course, these were the two onyx stones that were on the shoulders of, of Aaron, the high priest. And so, again, showing a picture of the, his names, our names are engraved and put before him. As he speaks to us, he is engraving his word on our hearts, but yet our names are also permanently engraved and put before him, just like our high priest will bear the burdens of his people, you know, on the shoulders, bearing the burdens of the people. It's a picture, another picture of Yeshua. So here they are, they come to this place of liberty, and, uh, and, but yet in their eyes, this was a place of hardship. Right, but Yahweh was going to deliver them. He was going to redeem them, and He's bringing them over to this place of liberty. But they they couldn't see how it was going to happen. Right, James one two through four says, "Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing." Romans eight twenty eight says, "For we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who were called according to His purpose." So here they are, they're at the mouth of liberty, but they need to change their focus. Moshe saying to, to see the salvation of Yahweh, see the Yeshua of Yahweh, you need to just uh, be silent before Yahweh, be still, and, and have faith, right? I mean, this is encouraging them, have faith, wait, Yahweh's going to do something amazing in your midst, and just listen, just settle down, just watch, see what's going to happen, right? And then he does something amazing, he turns to Yahweh and says, what are you doing? <laughs> right? It, paraphrasing, but that's what happens. So, so the people are complaining to Moshe. Moshe is telling them to stand strong, stand firm, have faith, be, be silent. Listen, God is going to settle it. And then he turns it to, to the heavens and says, uh, no, what, what, what are you doing here? Right? So then Adonai says to Moshe, what? <laughs> what a spiritual conversation, right? But, but this is what happens. Um, he turns to Yahweh and says, Yahweh, what are you doing? What's happening? And, and Yahweh says, what are you crying to me for? How would you like to have your prayers answered like that? You know, think about it for a minute. And you, and you go and you're crying out to Yahweh. And he goes, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> but consider what's happening here. He says, I didn't tell you to stop. But we're at the water. Yeah. But we can't swim. Okay. So what happens now? You go through it. What do you mean you go through it? Just start walking. Hmm. See, again, we're showing a picture. 
of a mikvah, picture of a, a baptism coming out, being redeemed, being immersed, changing their status as a people and coming out the other side uh, changed and different, right? And so Yahweh says, tell the people of Israel, go forward, keep walking. And if we stop and think about it for a minute, like, but I can't swim. If I keep going forward, I'm going to die. And, and I believe that's the idea that Yahweh is, Yahweh is saying the old nature needs to die. The ways of Mitzrayim need to die. The old things that you used to serve and follow need to die. And you're going to come out the other side, something new. I will renew you and I will bring you to myself and I will give you everything that you need. Right. Uh, Isaiah 52, 11 and 12 says, get out and leave your captivity where, where everything you touch is unclean. Get out of there and purify yourselves. You who carry home the sacred objects of Yahweh, you will not leave in a hurry running for your lives for Yahweh will go ahead of you. Yes, the God of Israel will protect you from behind, which we do see as also being quoted uh, 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 later as well in, in, in the scriptures. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4 says, brothers, I don't want you to miss the significance of what happened to our fathers. All of them were guided by the pillar of cloud, and they all passed through the sea. And, and in connection with the cloud and with the sea, they all immersed themselves into Moshe. Uh, also, they ate the same food from the Spirit, which was we see out of the mouth of God, from the mouth of God. And they all drank the same drink from the Spirit, for they drank from a Spirit-sent rock, which followed them, and that rock was the Messiah. We're going to go back to verse 2 here for a second. It says, in connection with the cloud and with the sea, they all immersed themselves into Moshe. Okay, did they literally immerse themselves into Moshe? Were they, follow, were they following Moses or were they following Yahweh? Well, they were following Yahweh, but Moshe was the one who Yahweh had instructing them and uh, was telling them what he wanted to, for them to have. So they immersed themselves not just into the man Moshe, but into what he was teaching them, okay? Because he was following Yahweh in the midst of that. So in connection to the cloud, which moved by the angel of Elohim and the sea, which was the mikvah, they were immersed into the instructions that Moshe would bring for their deliverance and leading them to Sinai, which is the instructions from Yahweh himself. In John chapter 5, verses 46 and 47, we read, For if you believe Moses, you will believe me because he wrote about me. But since you don't believe his writings, how will you believe my words? If we believe what Moshe wrote, then we would believe the words of Yeshua. And if we believe the words of Yeshua, we must also believe the words from Moshe. Because Yeshua says they don't contradict. They, are, they, they, they work together. They are the same. Philippians 3, 13 and 16 tells us just very simply, keep walking. Okay, uh, don't know what it looks like. Don't know what it looks ahead, uh, what it's like ahead, but keep walking. Don't give up. Just keep walking. It says, forgetting what is behind me and straining forward toward what lies ahead. I keep pursuing the goal in order to win the prize offered by God's upward calling in the Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, as many of us as are mature, let us keep paying attention to this. And if you are differently minded about anything, God will reveal this to you. Only let our conduct fit the level which we have already reached. In other words, Yahweh has called you out, he has delivered you, you're walking with him, so live like it. Show it. Let it be done in, in your in your day-to-day -day life and, and how you live your life and how, uh, things that are important to you and how you're living as a people that are set apart to Yahweh. This is all important, right? Yahweh says, I've redeemed you so that I can bring you to myself. So he redeemed you, brought you through the mikvah to bring you to the mountain so that you can receive words of life from him to show you how to walk in covenant that he has given you as you walk into the promises and into the land that he has prepared for you. So walking ahead, living ahead, we walk in his word, we walk in his ways. All right. Well, guys, that's all we have for you this week. Um, I pray that this has been encouraging to you. It's been a blessing and I pray this has been challenging to you as well. We, we all need to be challenged so that we can change, right? So if this has been a blessing to you, please share it on whatever outlet you listen or watch. Please share these teachings to help us get the word out there. And if it has been a blessing to you, please consider making a donation to help us continue to get these teachings out there. Okay. So until next time, uh, be blessed, be a blessing, and we'll see you later on. Shalom.